This tutorial is to teach you how to use variables in Alice. To create a variable, you use the local, which stands for local variable, and you also want to make sure that your window preferences programming languages is set to Java so that it matches my screen. You're going to drag a local variable object into the programming environment. And the first thing that you have to do is you have to select what type of variable you want to have. If you select a string variable, that will allow you to store text or anything between quotes, characters, exclamation points, numbers. And we'll call this spoken string because we're going to have our character that we place on the stage use the string. And you can initialize it to nothing, to hello, or to other string. So I'm going to initialize it to this is my initial string. I also want to have a variable for an integer. An integer is a whole number, or a double allows a decimal point. So I'm going to drag in a new um, variable. I'm going to set this up as an integer, and I'm going to name it my int and it automatically initializes to zero, which is fine with me. Now, sometimes you'll do this and you'll think, I should have given it a more descriptive name. To delete it, you can't delete it easily up at the top, but you can delete the declaration and that'll delete it. So I'm going to create one with a better name. Again, I'm going to check an integer because I'm going to have it make a character spin around and I'm going to name it times to spin. Now I'm using camelback notation here. That means that the first word starts with a lowercase letter and each additional word starts with an uppercase letter. This one I'm going to initialize to 3 and I'm going to hit OK. I always want to see your variables at the top of the program because they have to exist before you can use them. Even if you have to go in and add a new one when you're halfway through your program, you should add it to the top. I'm going to add a character. We'll add the bunny. And bunny2 is an okay name for me, so I'll accept that. I'm going to go back to my code, and I'm going to have the bunny say what's in our string. And notice, spoken string is one of the options that comes up automatically. If I test this, the bunny should say what's stored in spoken string, which is, this is my initial string. You can change how long he says that for with the more button. And I'm going to put it up for a duration of two seconds, and I'm going to try it again. When you're testing things, you can change the speed of the playback right here. Now, to use me, the number of times to spin, I'm going to have the puppy, I'm sorry, the bunny, turn as many times as I have listed in times to spin. So we should be able to count, and he spun three times. Now the cool thing about variables is you can change them while the program's running. So I can grab my spoken string, bring it down here, and give it a new definition. Instead of hello, I want to select other string, and I'm going to type in, this is my second string. Then I can have him say that again, and I can just copy. I'm using an alt on the Mac, I believe it's a command on the PC, and I can test this. And you can see that the string changes. Now, it's much more useful if you can actually have your user assign the string value. And we'll just set it initially to hello, I'm going to change it in a second. And in our functions, 
I can use get string from user and I will drag that over here where it says hello so I'm going to set spoken string equal to whatever other string the user puts in. That worked quite right. Get string from user drop it here other string we're going to prompt this is what's going to say to the user please enter a string hit OK and so it's going to get other string from the user so now we're going to test it first we have to have the bunny say what's in the string. So again, I'm going to copy the line where he's saying spoken string and holding it for two seconds. And there you go using variables.